And this is going to be rather uh, tedious because I'm having to record this in a different place and I'm having problems getting this thing set up. And I thought I had it set up and now it's acting wonky. So bear with me <clears throat> while I uh, get this deal going. Hope you can see me okay. Maybe you can't. We'll see. I want to talk to you today <clears throat> about culture and gender. Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat yet again. And uh, this is kind of going to be more of a discussion of American culture. Um, but there'll be some other things thrown in there. So, based on a study done at Notre Dame, uh, work done there. And uh, what it discusses is the, the change in perception, expectation, um, assignments, uh, what, what a girl is, what a guy is, so on and so forth. So you, you have what they like to call a binary um, system where you have male, female. And the going uh, information says that it's unequal because males make more money, so on and so forth. We're not getting into that part of the discussion. We're talking about how this came about and some things to think about. So they give examples um, as to how um, differences occur. In the beginning, for example, first cheerleaders were men. Girls didn't do cheerleading. Uh, the first people to knit were men. First people to wear high-heeled shoes, men. It was a style. So, and that was fine. Women uh, pioneered things like computer programming and uh, brewing beer. So, all you beer drinkers, if there are any, hope not. That's where the beer came from initially. Um, so, their culture tells you what what your role is and uh you, they the these are unspoken rules in the sense of being written down they're not statutes they're culturally acceptable things I'm not talking about right and wrong here I'm talking about what culture says you should be doing uh behavior wise etc to be in step with your gender now is it that way in every country? Yeah, sure is. So a cross-cultural view of this would say that in the country that, that I go to, there's going to be uh, an expectation related to whether I'm a man or, or a woman. And we, we're not going to discuss transgender and homosexuality and stuff because that's not the point of this. Although that becomes part of the, part of the discussion. It's not part of our discussion today. So what's popular, what's expected, uh, what do you do? Uh, again, another example, back in the day, uh, people are sick of hearing that term now. <clears throat> Women weren't expected to be police officers. That was a, quote, man's job. Uh, firefighting, a man's job. <clears throat> Physical things, all done by men. Um, the first uh, female pilots, Amelia Earhart, was not the first. There were many before her. But again, it was thought of as that's uh, a male-dominated uh, profession, and it was that way for many, many years. Female pilots came into being needed World War II. They delivered airplanes. They didn't fly them in combat. Now they fly them in combat. So changes, changes over time. What causes that? Uh, a lot of everything. How do we determine what uh, what it is that tells us that uh, your gender should be whatever the culture says it is? Uh, it's what at the moment is acceptable. And they're, they're all kind of excuses for that. The idea is that you're physically incapable back not too many years ago 
mentally incapable, emotionally incapable of doing certain jobs. Now we know that's not true. Um, again, there are fighter pilots in the military, female fighter pilots do everything that the men do or uh, studies done. Just to give you an example, <clears throat> when you are accepted into flight program in one of the branches, uh, Navy and Air Force primarily, um, Marine Corps, the Army doesn't have fighter pilots. They go through a lot of testing. <clears throat> Promise I'll get this out of my throat before I talk to you guys next time. And uh, one of the parts of that training is called a centrifuge. They put them in this little capsule and spin them around and bring them, put them under certain G forces and uh, to see if they can keep from passing out or at what G level they pass out. And what's been found is that females tend to do better, that they uh, tend to be able to, to operate at higher G settings, G forces, excuse me, than males do. So all of this is just an opening, uh, uh, a way to open the door to the consideration of what uh, culture and gender are all about. Being told that because you are a certain gender, here's what you're supposed to do, quotes. And if you step outside those boundaries, then uh, you're not in violation of the law, you're in violation of the culture. And there really aren't any penalties other than you may be ostracized. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense, just a little bit of overview. I'll be back with you pretty soon. Uh, I want to discuss with you uh, culture and cognition. And I also want to discuss with you culture and emotion. I'll do that in a couple of subsequent um, short lectures like this. And so look for these because this is kind of a theme uh, out of the chapter that we're working in now. All right, let me see if I can turn this thing off because it's not won't let even cooperate and let me do that. All right, yeah, there we go. All right, see you. See you later.